Good morning everyone, my name is Isal van Sale and today I'll be discussing a recently published report by the ISS on PCVE initiatives on six West and Central African countries. These countries were Burkina Faso, Cameroon, Chad, Mali, Niger and Nigeria. For those of you who are not familiar with the subject, the P slash CVE stands for Preventing and Countering Violent Extremism. Today's presentation I would like to divide into four parts. Firstly, I would like to touch on what preventing violent extremism is. Secondly, I would like to briefly discuss how we went about collecting the data. Thirdly, I would be very excited to explain some of the findings we, we, we got during the data collection. And then I would like to conclude with sharing some t two recommendations. So let's talk about preventing violent extremism or PVE and what it is. Efforts aimed at prevention of violent extremism on the African continent have expanded quite, quite severely on the African continent and as such has, have um, attracted a lot of financial investment. <clears throat> efforts to contain terrorist violence are still continuing in other fronts and by this I mean military efforts, counter-terrorism efforts and even conflict prevention. However, what makes PVE so unique is the fact that it aims at addressing the violence directly behind violent extremism in Africa. And this, in, in other words, why are people joining violent extremism, extremist group on, in Africa and how can these be addressed? So to get on the policy part, the global, regional and even national policies offer some guidance on the content and actions that could be taken as part of PVE interventions. However, a great deal depends on how the theories and ideas associated with PCVE are actually translated into practical efforts and how these actions are designed to achieve the intended results. This practical question was the focus of our study. So we were curious to know about what these organizations were doing, how many of these exist in the six countries I've just mentioned, and where they are implementing the, the Preventing Violent Extremism initiatives. So we started our study by conducting an internet scan to see how many of these organizations are implementing PVE projects and where they are. And so we reached out to 238 organizations um, asking them whether they would be willing to participate in this study. We then compiled a semi-structured questionnaire and 67 organizations agreed to participate. Most of them opted to take the questionnaire and submit written written answers and some actually made time for, for Skype interviews. Most of the respondents were male and most of the respondents were working for national or civil society organizations. All in all, we collected data on 133 projects as most of the organizations are implementing two or more projects. So let's talk about the findings which I'm very excited about sharing with you. As I've said previously, the reason why we, we we, con we, we compiled the semi-structured questionnaire was to, to find out what these organizations were doing, what the objectives are of these projects, target groups, activities, challenges, and lessons learned. So in terms of the objectives, the most frequently mentioned objective was promoting tolerance and multiculturalism. And this basically refers to closing the divides between different ethnic groups, religious groups and different communities. We also asked the respondents who their target groups are and most of the respondents focus on two or more target groups. The most frequently mentioned target group was youth, followed closely by communities and women. So youth, I have to explain, was seen from two perspectives, either possible perpetrators of violence, according to the respondents, young people are frustrated, unemployed and easily exploited by violent extremist groups, and also they are seen as the future of the continent as they make up 60% of Africa's population. Women, however, were only discussed as either possible victims of violent extremism or possible agents in the prevention of violent extremism. This stands in stark contrast of some research that says um, women will voluntar voluntarily join these violent extremist groups and they can actually play, play a very important role into the radicalization and recruit recruitment of possible violent extremists. We were also especially curious about the funding and the duration of funding of these organizations and projects. The amount of funding documented in the study was almost 115, 115 million US dollars. 
Um, some of the respondents did not share the amount of, of funding, so this amount could be much higher. The duration of funding was a very disappointing trend in our research because most of the respondents did not share the duration of funding and those who did said that mostly they are being funded for 12 months or less. We need to seriously consider what can be achieved within 12 months if these organizations are required to plan the activities, implement the projects, evaluate and then report back to the organizations. So one of our findings is that short-term projects are not the solution for long-term problems. Another very interesting trend that we came across in the data collection was how these communities and local organizations are interpreting the term violent extremism. We came to the realization that the way we view violent extremism might not be a broad representation of what's happening on the African, in the African context. So let me say when, let me explain what I mean to say here is that, let's say for example, Boko Haram is considered one of the deadliest violent extremist groups on the African continent. However, when I was speaking to a respondent in Nigeria, in, in central Nigeria, he said that they face daily clashes between the Fulani herdsmen and, and surrounding communities, and that Boko Haram is the least of their, of their concerns. So he was right. Who are we to tell him that the Fulani herdsmen farmers conflict is not violent extremism? So what I, the point I want to make is that violent extremism cannot always be easily distinguished from public violence, criminal violence, or a conflict between ethnic and religious groups. In fact, a lot of the inter-ethnic and intercommunal conflicts I discussed with the respondents were caused by the decrease in natural resources and herding grounds for farmers. So for the sake of future design of PVE projects, we need to take into consideration how local communities and local organizations are interpreting the term violent extremism. The other very important finding I would like to discuss during this presentation is the question on evaluation. We at the ISS were very interested to know whether these organizations are, implement, are evaluating their projects or plan to evaluate once the project has been concluded and how they go about evaluating their projects. <clears throat> Referring back to the finding I discussed earlier on the short duration of funding, how can we realistically expect these organizations to evaluate their project if the funding was for 12 months or less? The, back to the point I want to make is 35 organizations out of the 67 said that they are evaluating their projects. However, only 10 out of the 35 said that they are doing it independently, which means that there's a monitoring and evaluation person on staff. The remaining of that 35 said that they're either, they are either doing the evaluation internally or not at all. And when I say internally, these respondents are using some outcome indicators or they are using very informal ways of measuring. So let me explain to you when I say very informal. One respondent said that they measure the results of their projects by looking at the amount of inter-ethnic friendships formed during the implementation of the project. Now, I would be very curious to know how they go about measuring this or counting the amount of inter-ethnic friendships formed. Another respondent said due to the limited capacity on evaluation, they just they go to the local, the local police stations in the community and ask for rep reports to see whether the violent incidences have decreased. So what I want to say is that opportunities to build an evidence base are lost if organizations are not using the same outcome indicators or methods as each other. So finally, let's talk about the two main recommendations which are in this case interlinked. As I've mentioned earlier, we don't know what these PV initiatives in the countries are doing or whether they are addressing the drivers behind violent extremism in every country. So firstly, these organizations implementing PCVE projects should find more effective ways of measuring the results and progress. Secondly, if we want to understand the effects of PVE initiatives, we need to start building an evidence base. And this requires, among other, the documentation of PCVE initiatives and the sharing of good practices and lessons learned.